Live from the campus of Penn State University, this is PSN News. It's Wednesday, April 19th. We have all you need to know about the closure of a college av business and details about State College Police Department's recent concerns. We also have more on gun violence around the nation, along with weather, sports, and entertainment. Stay tuned. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Jace Obardo. And I'm Mariana Dinelli. The Paterno Family Beaver Stadium run is now record-breaking in its fundraising efforts for the Special Olympics. During the 2023 race, more than $400,000 was raised. Some familiar faces from Penn State football made an appearance, including head coach James Franklin, as well as Sue Paterno, the run's organizer and wife of former Penn State football coach Joe Paterno. She describes the race as the highlight of her year. Runners also took a moment to honor the life and legacy of former Penn State and NFL running back Franco Harris, with some of them even sporting Harris's apparel during the run. Harris's presence was still felt at the race as his wife spent time high-fiving runners and walkers as they passed by, a role that Harris previously put himself in over years past. Weirdos Custom Pizzeria in downtown State College has officially announced its closure via a social media post made last Friday. Owner Joe Boss stated that the sudden closure happened when he and the landlord agreed to part ways. Continental Real Estate Management stated in a sign on the front door of the business that it had not been in operation for many days and appeared to be abandoned. This led the property management to change the locks to reduce any possibility of damage or theft. It is unknown if Weirdos will reopen at a new location at this time. Mount Nittany Health is facing a lawsuit after violating medical privacy rights. Two unnamed patients filed a four-count lawsuit in Center County, saying that the health system disclosed patients' private information to Facebook, Google, and other third-party websites. The suit alleges that Mount Nittany embedded tracking pixels into its website to track and record information to be sent to various websites and applications. The lawsuit is seeking damages in, damages in excess of $1 million. Mount Nittany Health has yet to give a detailed comment on the pending litigation. State College police officers are concerned after data revealed a majority of arrests made this past year have been for drunken driving. PUI arrests in State College increased nearly fourfold from 2020 to 2022, rising from 10 to 39 after remaining steady in past years. After State College Police made 117 DUI arrests just last year, Stallard says this should be a check for everyone to reevaluate their surroundings. Starting in May 2021 last year, after there had been 20 crashes due to drunk driving, the police department claims they placed a renewed focus on DUIs and hopes this will make people more aware of what they are doing after alcohol consumption. It seems like the warm weather is coming back after this week's cold front. But what weather can students expect to see this weekend? Luke Snyder with Campus Weather Service has more details on what to expect in tonight's weather report. Take a look. From the students of Penn State Meteorology, here is your Penn State Campus Weather Service forecast. Good evening, I'm student meteorologist Luke Snyder here for your Wednesday evening forecast. Taking a live look at Beaver Stadium, you can see we have completely clear skies right now, not much going on, and that's been the trend for much of the day thus far. And that's gonna continue as we head into the rest of the evening as well. For current conditions, we're around 63 degrees right now, with the feels like of 63 as well. A dew point of around 28 degrees, so the air is gonna be a little bit more on the drier side as of right now. And we have some great visibility coming in around 10 miles and some northwest winds coming in at around 10 miles per hour. Looking at temperatures in surrounding counties, you can see that State College as a whole is around 64 degrees right now, with the county surrounding being around the mid to lower 60s, and that trend is going to continue as we expand out into the rest of the state as well. And you can see a little bit higher temperatures more on the eastern portion of the state, and a little bit colder temperatures on the western portion of the state, pretty typical to see in the Commonwealth right now. And again, the only 
except for being eerie right now, sitting at around 45 degrees. And this is going to continue as we expand out to the rest of the lower 48 as well. We have a little bit more of above average temperatures for this time of year. And as we expand out, you can see down here in Texas, they're at around 91 degrees right now. So much of the uh, country is going to be these above average temperatures right now. You can even see right here on this uh, temperature map that we have a very large warm air mass moving through. And that's going to be making its way through the northeastern portion of the state. We're expecting higher temperatures for tomorrow and Friday as well to close off the work week. And then speaking of these higher temperatures, you can see that we're already seeing a big dramatic shift from temperature changes in the past 24 hours. So this time yesterday, we were around 23 degrees colder than it actually is right now. So almost the entire Commonwealth is around 20 degrees warmer than it was this time yesterday. And that's going to continue again throughout the rest of the week as well. Looking at future weather, you can see we only have a few passing clouds coming through the area later this evening. And then heading into tomorrow morning, you can see temperatures are going to be around the 40s for their low early to start tomorrow morning. And as we pass through the rest of the day, you can see that late Thursday, or late Thursday evening, we're going to have a very dramatic temperature increase, almost nearly 30 degrees, sorry, 40 degrees rather, of a temperature increase coming through the Commonwealth with a lot of the counties reaching almost the 80 degree mark. And as we continue to the rest of Thursday as well, you can see temperatures are going to dip, but not nearly as drastically as they did before. And then heading into Friday afternoon and evening, that's when we can see a lot of the Commonwealth will be breaking the 80 degree threshold mark for their recorded high temperatures. We have a lot of warm conditions and a lot of higher temperatures recorded to end off the week. And taking a wider look, you can see we have a few scattered showers passing through the area. Looking at a different model, you can see the, this large rain band is going to be passing through the area more so overnight Friday into Saturday. We can see a few lingering showers early, early Saturday morning. But then as those pass through, you can see we're going to have a more consistent and more of a solid rain system passing through the area Saturday afternoon and into the evening. And that's going to make its way on through into the rest of the weekend as well. And then early Sunday morning, the, large, the largest portion of that is going to pass through. And only a few lingering showers from the north are going to make their way down to the Pennsylvania region for Sunday evening, evening to close off the weekend. And then heading into the work week ahead, we should have some clear skies and no rain, hopefully. Taking a look at the rest of the day, you can see tonight we're going to be reaching a low of 42 degrees with those partly cloudy skies and the winds calming down just a little bit later on this evening. Looking at tomorrow, reaching a high of 81 degrees with completely sunny skies. Eureka! Some summer-like conditions are ahead of us right now, with those winds picking up just a little bit from the southwest. And taking a look at your seven-day outlook, you can see that we have those warmer conditions continuing to the end of the work week as well before those showers make their way in this weekend for Earth Day, heading in as temperatures decrease as well. And then going into Monday, those clouds are going to be leaving the area with some mostly sunny skies and some more seasonable temperatures for this time of year as clouds move in Tuesday and some potentially light rain showers heading into Wednesday as temperatures increase yet again. From the Penn State Campus Weather Service, I'm Luke Snyder. Have a great night. Welcome back to PSN News. I'm John Calavita with your sports update. Last night, the Penn State baseball team defeated Youngstown State 10-8 in a thrilling midweek contest. The Penguins struck first and took a 6-3 lead through the first two innings and seemed to take control from there. The Nittany Lions committed four errors in the game and fell behind 8-6 heading into the seventh inning. Penn State scored twice in the seventh and twice in the eighth with freshman Bobby Marsh hitting a bloop two-run double just out of the reach of the oncoming left fielder. The Nittany Lions then went on to win 10-8. Second baseman Kyle Hannon also extended his hitting streak to 17 games in the matchup. The Nittany Lions welcomed the Ohio State Buckeyes for a three-game series beginning Friday at 6 p.m. Penn State softball pitcher Bailey Partial broke not one, but two all-time school records last night. Partial got the nod to start against Bucknell for the Nittany Lions and in the first inning struck out her 746th career batter, breaking the record formerly held by Missy Becerras, who pitched for Penn State from 2002 to 2006. Her offense came ready to play and put up nine runs as Penn State cruised to a five-inning victory over the Bison. Marshall shut out Bucknell and took sole possession of that school record as well. It was quite a historic light for the Nittany Lions, who traveled to Maryland this weekend to, to play the Terrapins in a three-game set. Golden State Warriors forward and defensive standout Draymond Green has been suspended for Game 3 of the first round of the NBA playoffs against the Sacramento Kings. Green was ejected from Game 2 after stepping on the chest of DeMontis Sabonis in the fourth quarter of Golden State's 114-106 loss to Sacramento. This is the second time in Green's career that he's been suspended for a playoff game, the first coming in Game 5 of the 2016 Finals. Green has been the centerpiece of the Golden State defense for a decade, and his absence could prove to be the final blow in their efforts to repeat as champs. The Warriors will head home to the Chase Center down 2-0 in the series. Game 3 tips off at 10 p.m. Eastern in San Francisco. That's all for your sports update. After the break, Max Kugler has the latest updates from the entertainment world. Stay tuned. Welcome back to PSN News. I'm Max Kugler with your entertainment update.
With the exception of yesterday's blustery weather, it feels like spring is finally back in State College. Trees are blooming, pollen is blowing, and allergies are flaring up. This also means that the State College Farmer's Market is back in town on Locust Lane. This Friday, April 21st, local vendors will be setting up shop at 11.30 a.m. and will be open for business until 5.30 in the afternoon. The Farmer's Market has been connecting local producers with the student body since 1976, making this summer the 47th consecutive year running. For a full list of the vendors that will be there on Friday, visit statecollegefarmersmarket.com. Penn State, I have just one question for you. Would you like to be the next Beaver Stadium mic person? Tomorrow, April 20th, the Penn State Spirit Program is hosting tryouts at 6.30 p.m. If you're like me and get goosebumps just thinking about a jam-packed Beaver Stadium on game day, this may be the opportunity for you. From hyping up the crowd to being front and center on the field when the team runs out, the mic person is right there next to the Nittany Lion getting the 107,000-person crowd fired up for Penn State football. If interested, email cheerleading at psu.edu for more information. Only 20 more Saturdays until we're back at Beaver Stadium. Jury Duty is the latest show to take social media by storm. Created by the makers of The Office, it's like the Truman Show met Judge Judy. Centering in on a group of jurors in a courthouse, there's just one catch. Everyone is secretly an actor, except for one person. The show features actor James Marsden playing himself, as well as a plethora of other actors who have no real lines, just bits to follow. They all have one job, push the unsuspecting non-actor through a hero's journey of sorts in order to get the whole group of jurors to the finish line, all while navigating unforeseen obstacles in comedic situations. People have been loving it, and there are four episodes out so far. Jury Duty is available to stream on Freebie, which as the name suggests, is totally free. Well, that's all for your entertainment update. After the break, interview anchor Adam Tinkleman was speaking with Jay Patel, a member of the Nittany Chemical Society. Stay tuned. Welcome back to PSN News. I'm Adam Tinkleman, and with me tonight is Jay Patel, a student member of the Nittany Chemical Society. Jay, thanks for being here tonight. Thank you for having me. Well, uh, the first thing I wanted to ask, this might seem pretty obvious, but you are a chemistry major, right? Yes, I am. All right, and what first got you interested in chemistry, just as a, a, a place to study? So, like, I've kind of always wanted to have, like, a career in, this, like, in the field of science, and it's kind of just growing up. I was kind of like, what field will it be? Mm -hmm. Growing up at first, I was like, probably biology, because I wanted to do something in the medical field. Kind of like, my gra I've always been helping my grandpa. He's dealt with, like, four heart attacks, so something yeah. would be, like, helping him out with, like, everyday needs he does. And then I took high school biology, and I did not like it whatsoever. <laughs> so then I was in that limbo. I was like, okay... I don't know what to do now. Mm -hmm. The one thing I thought I was going to do, not doing it anymore. So then I took high school chemistry, and I was like, okay, I love this. Mm -hmm. I, it clicked with me. I understood it right away. So I was like, I right, guess this is going to be my major, and ended up taking AP chemistry, and I liked it even more. So I was like, okay, this is my major, and decided to roll there from that. Yeah, wow. And, and do you think uh, taking those high school classes prepared you well for what you exper uh, experienced so far in college? It, they definitely did help. I felt like the, the background for like, what the gen chems here have been. There, there's a lot of stuff that like we didn't cover in high school chemistry that we cover in Gen Chem here. So, but it did set like a really good background for like what you should expect and not to expect. Yeah. Uh, now you did mention um, a, right before the show that you went to a conference recently. That's a, a chemistry conference. Do you think you could elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah. So I'm in this club called the Nittany Chemical Society, and we went to the American Chemical Society convention in Indianapolis this year. So mm -hmm. we're kind of like a student affiliate of the club. Yeah. And the conference is just like, it's a year, there's two every year, but our club specifically goes to one in the spring. This year is in New, uh, in Indiana, next year will be in New Orleans. Yeah, wow. So it's kind of just like we went there, went to like, you either like kind of went to talks, like, or other, some of like the professors from Penn State were there, so like mm -hmm. we went to some of their talks. And like there was also like geared stuff towards like undergraduates. So like they had like undergraduate social, they had like other just like, they had the, uh, the award ceremony, so we went to like that. So like Penn State, our cl club received the outstanding award, wow, yeah. which is like the top w the award you can get through the cl uh, like the American Chemical Society. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of just like a thing where like a bunch of chemists get together and right <laughs> talk about chemistry. Well, hey, congrats on that award. That's a pretty big deal, I think. Yeah, uh, thank you. And so uh, you you went uh, on behalf of the Nittany Chemical Society, yes. correct? Now, now, what does the uh, NCS do? Like, what is their goal here at Penn State? So like here. We do a lot of like outreach events. Um, obviously, we have to fundraise a lot for the the conference because 
got to pay for a lot of the stuff there. Of course, yeah. So, like, for, like, fundraising, we do, like, stuff like selling football merch. Uh, we um, hold, like, if you're, like, going through, like, the labs and saw, like, people selling glasses, mm-hmm. that was us for sale and safety glasses to raise money. And then we do, like, outreach events. So, like, we'll go to, like, the Belmont Youth Center or, like, Radio Park Elementary. Yeah. And we'll just do, like, fun little experiments for the kids. Like, recently we did, like, two outreach events were, like, were CSI-related. So, like, we dealt with, like, strawberries, trying to extract DNA from strawberries. Ooh, yeah. Or we did, like, fingerprinting. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of just a lot of, like, fun little demos and experience things to, like, kind of gear out little kids and kind of get them into, like, what science is early and kind of see if they want to become right, yeah. in the future. Spark some interest yeah. so they know what they want to do. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. Uh, and would you say uh, community outreach is a pretty central part to the NCS? Yeah, I'd say it's, it's, a, it's a big part of what we do. I feel like it's like you probably think the club would be like an academic club because it's a mm-hmm. chemistry, but like it's more of like a big, like a social club. So we kind of just like, like having fun. It's not like you think, oh, there's just a bunch of chemists. They're just like <laughs> all involved in the books and just doing chemistry. But it's mm-hmm. more just like kind of doing fun stuff with chemistry and kind of just like getting to know other chemistry majors here and just like having fun. Yeah. Well, and uh, something else you mentioned was the Curie program. Is that right? Yeah, so that's something just like that, that has nothing to do with NCS. That's just a program that was, it's, a, it's in its second year, and it was kind of introduced to us during our first year seminar. Mm-hmm. And it kind of piqued my interest because I, I wanted to get involved in undergraduate chem- like research, but yeah. I had no idea what field. So there's like, there's a bunch of different fields in chemistry, so like inorganic, right, organic, right. physical. But I didn't know what field I wanted to get to. So like, with this program, I'm able to like rotate through three different labs and conscious kind of experience what they do for a month, mm-hmm. and at the end of it, I had to I choose a lab to join, and like I'll spend like this summer here for like probably two like eight weeks just doing under like summer research. Yeah. Uh, so I, I know you mentioned that they were unrelated from one another, but I mean these are two very big uh, events or you know clubs and programs within the chemistry world mm-hmm. here at Penn State. Uh, how do you think they affect each other? Like how how have they affected your life here together uh, after you know becoming involved in both of them? Well, NCS definitely has probably been like, like my favorite part of my first year here. Mm-hmm. It's just like, I didn't expect to get such involved in a club. Like, yeah. In high school, I was always just like a member of the club. I never really got like involved in them. Right. This was probably like, the first time I got like super involved in something, and I really enjoyed it. I was kind of like, it, it, me through and getting me involved. Like a lot of like the upperclassmen were like, they wanted me to like run for like exec position. So I yeah. ended up running for treasurer, and I won, or I got elected. Hey, so congrats. I'm gonna be the treasurer of the club next year. <laughs> Wow, so uh, th- there's a lot of team communication. There's, yeah. They're trying to build you up, right? Mm-hmm. That's really cool to see in a club, just especially the older members kind of uh, taking care of the, the newer members. Yeah. Um, now, you uh, mentioned that you got more involved, um, which is a great thing. Do you think that there are a lot of career opportunities you can see kind of jumping off of these clubs? Oh, especially the, the NCS, it's kind of a lot. Because like, with us going to the conference, it's a lot of like networking and like professional mm-hmm. development. So it's like... Even though we like kind of try to have our fun, but like at the conference, we're able to like meet a lot of people, kind of to get to know what's out there and like the chemistry. So it's like I personally want to like work in like the chemical aid industry. Mm-hmm. So it's like I went to a talk about like a technical talk about people who are currently in the industry and they're just talking about their experiences. And one of the people there was like essentially kind of exactly what I wanted to do. Right. He, yeah. He joined the industry kind of out of his undergraduate and kind of has worked his way up into. A, a leadership role and like a mentor type role and that's kind of what I want to do I want to like work my way up into like a role up top so it's like I want to get that experience of being in, like an entry level so it's like when I get to that top point I can like be like I all know what like some of the other people I work under me or work mm-hmm. for like are going through so would you say that these clubs and you know like making these connections and stuff have kind of uh, helped you focus on where you want to end up by the end of your college career it definitely does. Like, I feel like I do want to stay involved in this club for like the rest of my four years. I want to like stay involved in like undergraduate research for mm-hmm. my time here. So it's like it's definitely it's nice to be involved early and kind of just, like like set my foot out there and kind of be like I'm already involved now, so it's not gonna be like a problem in right. the future. Uh, so Jay, we are running a little low on time, so we got to wrap it up. But uh, just for one last question. Would you encourage other uh, chemistry majors like yourself to just look into these things, to sign up and, and see what they can do and where they can get involved? I definitely would. Like, I came here not wanting the guys thought, you know, I'd just do the same thing, join a club, kind of sit in the back and mm-hmm. take it in. But being like, actually joining and getting involved was amazing. So I, like, I definitely, especially the, like other chemistry majors coming in or like people maybe an interest in chemistry, you don't have to be a chemistry major to join the club. Right. We have like bio, like BMB majors and other types of majors. So it's like just being involved and it's like, 
joining the club has been a great time. Yeah. Okay. Well, Jay, thank you so much for being here and yep. sharing your uh, insider knowledge. Thank you. Next up, Jason Mariano will bring you the latest news from across the nation. Stay tuned. One sheriff's deputy is now dead with two other law enforcement officers injured following a shootout in West Central Minnesota. The shooting also killed a suspect involved in the police force's response to a domestic assault call. Upon the suspect being told he was going to be arrested for domestic assault, he pulled out a handgun and began shooting at the officers. This is one of seven scenarios where police officers have been shot in Minnesota in 2023 alone. The Minnesota Police and Peace Officers Association Director Brian Peters said, quote, This killing is a senseless act of violence and hatred towards police officers who put everything on the line to serve and protect our communities, end quote. Four lives are now lost with 28 people injured after a deadly shooting at a 16th birthday party in Alabama. Alexis Dowdell was celebrating her sweet 16 at a downtown dance studio when someone showed up with a gun around 10.30 p.m. When asked to leave, shots were fired injuring Dowdell's mother and many other beloved community members. Among the lives lost was Alexis's 18-year-old brother, Phil Dowdell, who was a high school senior planning to play college football and was described as a very humble child by family and friends. Investigators inspected the scene the next day and found at least five bullet holes in the front windows. President Biden was briefed about the incident shortly after and is offering his support to the Dadeville community as they mourn. An 84-year-old man is being charged with first-degree assault in Kansas City after shooting a 16-year-old boy. Andrew Lester shot Ralph Yarrell twice, once in the forehead, then in the right forearm, after Yarrell mistakenly went into Lester's home to pick up his younger brothers. Prosecuting attorney Zachary Thompson said in a news conference that there was a racial component to the shooting, as Lester is white and Yarl is black. This shooting has riled up many people across the country, even reaching D.C. with President Biden demanding justice. Missouri is among one of the roughly 30 states with stand-your-ground laws, which allows for the use of deadly force in self-defense. However, the prosecution in this case determined the shooting was not in self-defense. Yarl is currently recovering at home in Kansas City. The National Urban League is claiming black Americans' democracy is being threatened by current political leaders' extreme views. The NUL also believes these views undermine black officials' job performance. These statements were made after Republicans voted out two black representatives in Tennessee for voting a legislative rule, followed by a data report showing an increase in hate crimes and changes in classroom curriculum normalizing extremist views. One of the most prominent areas being examined is critical race theory, which led to the forward tracking project being created as part of the UCLA Law School. This project shows local, state, and federal government entities that have introduced more than 670 measures, such as bills and resolutions, against critical race theory since 2020. Other issues addressed in this report include extremism in the military and black voter concerns. That concludes our show tonight at PSN News. Be sure to check us out on Twitter and Facebook at PSN News, on Instagram at Penn State Network News, and to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash PSN News. Have a good night and stay safe, Penn State.